Horses. Are they any good? Should you be making horses as a part of a tank division? Is it a worthwhile thing to do? We're going to sit down now, look at the numbers, and see if pairing horses with tanks is a good thing. Or maybe you should just stick with infantry and pair those with uh, tanks. Today, we're going to find out that question. So this is what a infantry is. Fair enough. These are the stats. But I mean, without comparison, these numbers mean nothing, do they? So let's just change this now to a single horse. Cost you 25 XP to change this as a part of an existing division. That's pretty insane. So look at this very carefully here. This is important that you understand this. There are some big terrain penalties just for going for a horse on its own. And here they are. Minus 40% for amphibious. Hills, forests, urban have a minus 5% attack. Mountains also 10% jungles 10 percent, and also lose movement speed into mountains as well so what it's trying to represent here is that because a horse is something that's kind of difficult it has to be uh used in a certain terrain type it loses some mobility and attack potential in different terrain types be aware of this because this is important because tanks have very similar debuffs as well remember feet can potentially go anywhere for the most part but horses hooves and wheels and tracks are more limited on where they can go. So as you can see here, a single horse will give you an increase in speed. And to be fair, this is the biggest bonus you get from a horse. You get increased speed. So if you've got a tank, for instance, that's 6.4 kilometers per hour, which in this case we don't, but we'll come back to that. Potentially, you could go faster. You get slightly more organization, which is surprising as well. Uh, suppression goes up a very small amount, hence the reason why we use one horse for suppression. The supply usage is slightly higher, which isn't a big deal. But remember, when you have lots of horses, the supply is going to get significantly higher. It costs slightly more infantry equipment, only a very small amount, but not significant. And the training time is a little bit higher as well. So just to summarize, more org, more speed are your upsides. And, and your downsides is you've got bigger terrain penalties and it uses slightly more equipment. Remember, when you're making a tank division, you're always focusing on reducing the modifiers to try and get the best terrain buffs. So I'll be honest with you, if you are looking to use tanks in difficult terrain types, such as forests, hills and mountains, probably pairing them with your infantry is probably the best thing to do. So let's go for a 50-50 here. And you can see... We have 135 HP, 35 org, which is kind of if it's a little bit on the low end, 40 would be a lot better. Probably adding on an extra infantry would be better. Maybe two, maybe three. There you go. That's actually better. 40 org. So we'll go with this division as the representation. Let's go for the cavalry now then. Cavalry boyos for the win. Cavalry, cavalry. And here we go. This is what we've got from our cavalry division. So overall, we're going slightly faster. We're going the fastest speed which the tank can go, which in this case is 4.4 4, 4 kilometers per hour. In that case, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make the tank go fast enough. It will always go the fastest speed of the slowest unit. In this case, the slowest unit is the horses at 6.4, but the tanks can go at 6.7. So it will go the, the actual division itself will move at 6.4 kilometers per hour. This division will also gain more organization as well because it's using horses. Just a note is as time goes on and you get more upgrades, horses don't get as good benefits from research as infantry do. So as you can look really closely, you can see, look, defense and breakthrough are increasing by 5% for leg infantry, but horses are only getting 2%. And as you go through, you can see the horses start to fall off as time goes on. Horses were used predominantly in early World War II quite heavily, but as the war went on, they were used less and less and less as they were replaced from motorized and to mechanized. And a final note too, which is also a little bit confusing, is these upgrades give 5% soft attack for mobile infantry and leg infantry. Same again with the next one, but the final upgrade, the very last one gives 10%. So horses actually gain a bigger soft attack bonus when maxed out compared to leg infantry. So leg infantry at the end will have more breakthrough and defense where horses will have more soft attack the differences are very small though so just be aware of that just understand as the game progresses so you get in a game 6.1 extra organization from the horses it's, it's, it's a very small amount is it really worth it personally i don't think so a lot of people value organization quite highly i personally don't if you're hitting at least 40 organization you're doing just fine any less than that you're gonna start struggling if you drop below 30 org you're gonna have a really hard time uh, maintaining your divisions on the front line because they're not going to be attacking as defendingly defending as well as they should do more suppression from horses as you'd expect doesn't really help you with the division in the field though supply usage goes up by 4.8 now this is massive 
Remember, this is a 1.5 supply unit going to 2.06. Remember, that doesn't sound like a lot. 0.5 supply per division. But if you've got 24 of these, that's a total extra of 12 supply. So you can imagine that could cause a traffic jam on your front line. Horses do need a lot of supply. You're going to bring your hay, your horse's hooves. You've got to have the, 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 the shovels to scoop up the horse poop. What else are you going to bring? Horse tranquilizers horse paste so they don't get covid you got, there's a lot of things you gotta care about with your horses you know guys that's why this supplies <laughs> what am i doing the infantry equipment goes up significantly too by 160 pieces of infantry equipment once again that's not a small amount if if you have 24 divisions 24 divisions that will equate to 160 24 that's 3,000, almost 4,000 infantry equipment i whip, whipped out my calculator just, just whipped it out there on stream there so to summarize Horses have more organization. Horses have more speed. But everything else is a strict downside for the most part. To illustrate my point, let's just see if we maxed out the research on horses. Let's pretend we're in a late game horse situation. So we're getting all the passive bonuses you get from horses and infantry. If we maxed out all the passive bonuses for support weapons and support infantry equipment, getting the maximum amount of breakthrough soft attack and defense you'll gain from horses and infantry which isn't equipment based put it that way so this is converting from full infantry to full horses what's the difference so we get more speed as you'd expect more org as you'd expect but now you can see you gain slightly more soft attack but my god it's such a small amount we're basically getting five percent extra soft attack giving you 2.4 extra soft attack Hey, soft attack's important, don't get me wrong. But overall, uh, late game, an extra 5% is not going to make a big difference. So, not a big deal. However, infantry reigns supreme with max upgrades. You're losing 21 defense having horses instead of infantry. And you're losing 2.8 breakthrough if you're having horses. That breakthrough is not very high though, because infantry haven't got a high breakthrough to begin with anyway. It's just something to, to take into account. For the most part, this doesn't really change the dynamics for the most part. I think the big deal is if you're if you're on terrain like plains and desert, forests and hills, I think for the most part, if you're pairing tanks with horses, you're going to go just fine as long as they're at least the minimum speed for horses. Now, however, if you're in difficult terrain types, such as mountains, you've got major rivers, for instance, at that point, you're probably better off using infantry. It all depends on how quick you can make breakthroughs. If you can push into the front line and make big breakthroughs and take advantage of that speed, horses are way better. However, if you can't take advantage of the speed due to the amount of damage you're dealing, due to the fact that the terrain is going to be against you, you're probably better off with infantry. Do you know what? I think I've learned something from this. For the most part, if I'm going to make infantry, if I'm going to make tanks, I think I'm probably just going to stick with the infantry because personally, I want to reduce those train modifiers as much as possible and as i mentioned before infantry don't have any extra terrain modifiers but they do now because they're paired with tanks and tracks can't go anywhere but feet can it's just something to note and be aware of honorable mentions let's talk about some of the other lesser known mobile infantry first of all let's talk about camels so what's the difference between a camel and a horse Boom, here we go. So this is one horse, and then we replace this with a single... So camels have similar issues with different terrain types. Uh, however, they're not significant compared to horses. Let's have a cheeky look. So it does seem like they have less speed on hills and less speed on urban compared to horses. So horses are actually better for hills and urban, but it's only a 5% speed thing, so it's not a big deal. However, camels are gaining a massive movement speed bonus in plains and deserts, which is to be, to be expected, but also marshes as well. Interesting. So there's a few surprises baked in here. Overall, the speed is slightly less. Am I reading that correctly? 6.4 kilometers per hour for the horse. And the camel is only 5.6 kilometers per hour. So camels aren't as fast as horses. Well, it kind of makes sense, I guess. Use your imagination. It does appear that camels have slightly more HP, which I suppose is kind of good, which means that the division will lose less manpower and less equipment being actively involved in battles. That's what HP means. The org's the same. The supply usage is slightly less, but it's such a small amount. Very small amount. 0 0.02. <sighs> Uh, I don't it, it's not even worth having a discussion about it it's just so this difference is so small it's not worth talking about the infantry equipment though is higher so we found that from infantry horses there's more equipment required but then from also from horses to camels there's also more in infantry equipment required 
So the cost for a basic raw camel division is significantly higher compared to a raw infantry. And also the training time goes up as well. It goes up even more. So you're having to deal with extra equipment costs, extra training time to use a camel just for the extra bonuses, which to be fair, the only bonuses are the desert combat one. 5% extra attack and defense in desert and 10% extra movement speed. Here's the big kicker though. Camels are slower than horses. So technically, would a horse still move faster in desert because the speed is higher? I think it actually would. And now I think about it more and more. I think to myself, camels are crap. <laughs> it doesn't seem like they're very good. In a roundabout kind of way, Paradox have nerfed their speed, but then gave them terrain buff speed bonuses for planes, marshes. For me, it doesn't feel like you're gaining a big deal. The biggest bonus you get from a camel is the 5% attack and 5% defense, but everything else is worse. Why would you ever make this? I don't know. I don't know. I think there's only one instance where I feel like this would be applicable, guys. You know what it is, right? And it's going to be all about Libya, Egypt, and Algeria, Tunisia, isn't it? Because this is where most of the desert tiles are in the entire game. And if you're able to take advantage of that little bit of extra attack, a little bit of extra defense, and that tiny little bit of extra um, movement speed paired with tanks, that's the only one time that's going to be relevant. But that's a massive waste of XP, isn't it? Because think about it. You, when you move back to Europe, you're better off flipping back to horses or infantry, which is going to cost you the XP to flip it back. So is it really worth your time to spend the XP into something that's going to be used, specifically one theater? No, it really isn't. I think that's one of the big dilemmas with Hoi Force sometimes. You want to make special forces. You want to make tailor-based divisions that work better in different theaters. But the aim actively encourages you to make one division that works everywhere. You know what I mean? I think the XP cost sometimes for changing your division templates is just way too unbelievably high. It almost feels like division template construction needs a rework because at the moment you're disincentivized from actually making different divisions based on different theaters, which is kind of sad in a way because I kind of want to, but the game's kind of like, nah, you have to spend like 50 to 100 XP to make a new division that potentially you'll only use once or twice maybe, which is kind of sad, isn't it? But outside of roleplay, and North Africa don't ever make camels. It doesn't feel worth it. There is one more mobile infantry we have not talked about. And we might as well just men mention it as an honorable mention, right? And it is going to be bicycles. So let's make a horse, single horsey. And then we replace that single horse with a bicycle. Now, surprisingly, a bicycle is considered a regular infantry division. They're not considered a mobile battalion, which is kind of strange. So what are we getting? First of all, supply costs goes back down by 0.6. It's such a small amount. It's so insignificant. We'll not worry about it. Organization goes down by 10 as well. So it behaves like infantry does, basically. Reliability also goes down by 5%. So that's basically you're more likely to experience equipment loss as a part of this division. But 5% is such a small amount. Is it worth talking about? Not really. It has the same infantry equipment cost as infantry, but it requires 10 support equipment per battalion. And that can really add up. Overall, though, some of the attack and movement changes are really interesting. So bicycles have left movement speed for amphibious invasions than horses. What? They have less movement speed going over rivers than horses. I guess horses can swim, so that kind of makes sense. But a bicycle can't swim, can it? You gain the regular amphibious in penalty as an infantry would. But then, for the most part, it behaves like infantry. Wow. I'm starting to feel like bicycles are the, for the win. They're a little bit expensive. That's probably the big downside to it. However, they behave like infantry, but they have terrain bonuses. 20% movement bonus in urban. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? So that's 20% off, off top. 20% on top of the 6.4 kilometers per hour. What? The only two downsides when it comes down to terrain adjusters is amphibious is slightly slower and rivers is slightly slower, but it's just a small and significant amount. For the most part, if I was to make a, a rankings of mobile infantry, I think bicycles will be S tier. They'll be at the top. The only fundamental downside of bicycles that I can see is they're just a little bit expensive. But let's just say we're going to make a tank division. All right. It's going to be a bicycle tank division. So in this case, we'd, we'd probably have a few more. One, two, three. We'd have 
tanks, but we don't have tanks research because we're the Netherlands. Ta the Dutch haven't invented tanks. And overall, though, I suppose you'd have some decent terrain modifiers. Wow. Okay, guys. So if, I suppose if you want infantry, which have the great ability to practically go everywhere when it comes down to terrain types, and you want the added bonus of going a little bit faster, bicycles are definitely the way forward. The bicycle meta is well and truly here, boys. Well, there you go. Bicycle is well and truly king. If there is no cost and you have unlimited military factories, you definitely want to go with the bicycle over everything because it has the best terrain modifiers in the game for mobile infantry even though the game doesn't consider mobile infantry it considers its regular infantry why i don't know in summary horses do work if you want the extra speed on your tank division but overall they kind of suck when it comes down to their train adjusters which tend to be significantly worse than infantry does that make sense is that good well, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want more hoi four tips boys and hoi four well we got another video for you here give this video a click Give it a click, give it a click.